The latest live service game on the block, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, has faced so much backlash ever since they released the first teasers and trailers for it, but now in a desperate attempt to get people interested in this game, the developers are doing interviews saying it has the same DNA as Batman Arkham. I have a few things to show off, but before we get into the topic, if you enjoy the content I create, check out the links in the description, follow me on social media, and consider supporting through Patreon or via YouTube memberships. Now, I have been live streaming all of the Arkhamverse games because I absolutely love these titles. I loved them years ago when I played them for the first time. I'm loving them again, getting to go back through them, but unfortunately, the latest entry into the Arkhamverse Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, I have not been hyped for it in any way, shape, or form. The only good thing that I think is going to come out of this is the fact that it is Kevin Con Conroy's final outing as the Bat. He was so fantastic. Uh, I mean, in many roles that he did over the years, don't get me wrong, but of course, the Arkhamverse has a very special place in my heart. Loved it. Lots of nostalgia. But they have been desperately trying to hype up this Suicide Squad game, even though nothing's gone positively with it. All of the early previews got destroyed by the media. Every teaser and trailer has gotten absolutely ratioed, and it does not seem like there's a lot of hype behind it. And now, of course, we have developers coming out almost damage controlling weeks before launch because I think the pre-order numbers are low. I think that our Arkhamverse fans are not going to support this live service nightmare that nobody asked for, and I think that they are really trying to get some kind of excitement surrounding this game. So it says Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has the same DNA as the Batman Arkham game, says Rocksteady, even though they have confirmed that this is part of the Arkhamverse. So one would assume that it has to, in some way, shape, or form, have something that's similar, but honestly, it doesn't seem like the story is similar. It doesn't seem like the characters are similar, the designs are similar, the gameplay similar. The only thing that seems it, that it shares is not only Kevin Conroy, but Tara Strong, who is voicing Harley, who did voice Harley in some of the Arkhamverse games. It says this comes as many remain skeptical over the studio should be working on a live service since it's previously found its success with single player games. Yeah, I would have been thoroughly excited to play a single player game. Arkhamverse continuation, even if it was a decade later, even if it was with slightly different characters, but unfortunately they threw at us a bunch of characters nobody particularly cares about uh, with a version of Harley that's supposed to be the Arkhamverse Harley, even though it seems like she acts wildly different and she's basically a new version of herself. And then, of course, you have battle passes and live service. It's just a nightmare situation. However, in a new interview with Play Magazine, a project lead draws a direct comparison between the games. At least in terms of its story, Rocksteady feels that Suicide Squad won't be too much of a departure from its usual work, even if the games seem very different. You know, typically if something seems different, that is because it is different. You should be able to, you know, trust in players to watch teasers and trailers and find the comparisons, but because we can't find the direct links, you have to come out and you have to explain it to us, meaning you did it poorly, but it's still full of the DNA that infuses the Arkham series, he said. Those foundations of story and character are absolutely central to our process. Story-wise, this is easily our biggest game, but we have found out that quantity and size does not always equal quality. We've seen that in movies and TV shows and, of course, video games. Look at something like Starfield. It was an absolutely massive game, and while I did not think it was the worst title to release in 2023, I also felt like they definitely uh, could have 
taken some extra time, polished it up, and if they made it slightly smaller in scale, it probably would have been a heck of a lot better, but that is not what they did. And it is so hard to believe that they are trying to convince us that story-wise, it, you know, it's, it shares the same DNA as the Arkham series because from everything we've seen, it really doesn't. I mean, the story is that, uh, you know, Waller creates a task force known, of course, as the Suicide Squad and for a co covert mission in Metropolis, so it's not even set in Arkham, which people were not happy with. And of course, they have to uh, realize the severity of the situation. Brainiac has invaded Earth and is brainwashing its inhabitants, including the Justice League members, Superman, Flash, Green Lantern, Batman. And of course, Wonder Woman is the only apparent member who is not under Brainiac's control, which does make sense because of course she has the lasso of truth. But also, a lot of people think they just wanted to find some way to have a female be the strong, independent woman who doesn't fall under the influence of this male character. Because as I've talked about many times, this is a sweet baby ink game. And they have had their claws in this title. I mean, you... I'm sure all remember the Poison Ivy situation from a few weeks ago, where we found out that they, uh, yeah, you know, decided to basically reset Poison Ivy, even though, spoiler alert, she had a big sacrifice in Arkham Knight. They decided to bring her back, and it really seems like she is a Greta Thunberg uh, clone, but that is not the only problem that it seems that's going on with the Suicide Squad game. We have, of course, Wonder Woman, which a lot of people are question questionable about, even though it does make sense, um, with the Lasso of Truth. We have the Poison Ivy thing, and when they're talking about DNA being similar, there's no possible way that that could happen when you have a sweet baby ink sensitivity reading for your product. Let's be honest, the Arkhamverse games had a lot of sexual jokes, a lot of adult themes. Of course, you have Catwoman, who was taken hostage and had to be saved by a man. That would not happen in a modern game that sweet baby baby ink would be working on. It just wouldn't. And they have done a lot for this game. As you can see, they worked on script writing, meaning they actually had their claws deep in the story. They helped with banter, so that means, of course, no sexual jokes between the characters, no tension there. Uh, it's going to be very cringe-worthy, maybe characters calling each other mid, calling each other losers, haha. <laughs> of course, cutscenes, meaning dialogue and cutscenes, is going to be a bit toned back, barks, audio logs, etc. They have done a lot when it comes to this game, and I do not want to, uh, you know, deal with Sweet Baby Ink. And in just the few years that they've been part of the industry, they've already made waves on it. I mean, look at all of the games that they've worked on, things like Alan Wake 2, God of War, Ragnarok, Spider-Man 2. I mean, they have been part of several projects that, yes, have been considered woke, or at least had very woke elements. Um, these people, unfortunately, anything they touch turns to shit, and yeah, I mean, just judging by the gameplay as well, this game is trash. Preview rejected by mainstream press over live service elements and extremely repetitive gameplay. As someone who has you know, gone through the Arkhamverse titles several times and has sat down and watched these Suicide Squad trailers over and over, I see nothing except for Kevin Conroy that makes me think of the Arkhamverse. And I think by them connecting this game to the Arkhamverse, it was originally years ago, a desperate attempt to bring people back to their titles, but it's clear that Rocksteady at this point has no idea what their fans actually want, and they are so blinded by industry trends like live service, they have killed a maybe years ago could have been made to be a decent project, and unfortunately, if you are a big fan of the Arkhamverse, I do not think that this is going to be the game for you. And if you, of course, do not want to support games that may be 
focus on the narrative or ultimately are not worth the $70 price tag that companies expect us to pay, it does not seem like Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is going to be a game for you because it seems like this is going to be a disaster and they're already damage controlling, trying to find ways to get people excited for this title, even claiming it has the same DNA as the rest of the Arkhamverse titles. But that's all that I had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this, make sure to give it a like, and if you didn't, give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.